Okay, so I just mentioned that Ascon was one of the finalists of the season competition as a lightweight uh, use case. So they also uh, won the NIST competition very recently at the beginning of this year. So let's see how this algorithm works, okay? So it was designed by Christoph Dobranik, Maria Eisleder, Florian Mendel, and Martin Schlapper. So this time it is a sponge construction not a block cipher or a stream cipher, but it is based on substitution permutation networks, okay? The permutation here is just uses confusion and diffusion layers like SPN. So it supports two block sizes, 64 and 128 bits. It has an internal state of 320 bits. Key is 128 bits. In this initial uh, part of the Caesar competition, Actually, Ascon had a variant that supported 96 bits. But nowadays, we always say that there is no need to use a secret key that is smaller than 112 bits. So they actually removed this support during the competition. And in their NIST application, they, were, they never mentioned this. Okay, So they only use 128 bits. Nonce is also 128 bits. Tag is 128 bits, which is we want to produce at the end. And the number of runs depends on the operation you use. Generally, it is either 12 or 6, OK? So it has very nice properties, like it's a single pass. So you single pass over the whole data just once and produce both ciphertext and the tag. This is the nice thing. It is online inverse free. It has security proof. It is lightweight, fast in hardware and software. And the good thing is it does not use any lookup table. Actually, it has a 5 by 5 S-box. And if you uh, do table lookups for this 5 by 5 S-box, then you know, uh, due to timing attacks, you might leak some information inside channel attacks. So for this reason, although they use an S-box, they provide a bit slice implementation where you do the operations at the bit level, so you don't need to use any table lookups, which I will explain in a minute. So let me show you the big picture where there's a permutation P here, which is applied A many times. Then I will show what is inside that P, OK? So let me explain what this picture means. So I told you that the internal state is 320 bits, which is fed into this permutation. So initially, you fill that 320 bits with 64-bit IV. 128 bit secret key and 128 bit nodes. Okay. You put it in this permutation, apply it 12 times. So you mix this internal state. Then, if you have authentic associated data, you XOR R many bits of your associated data with the top R bits of your internal state. Then perform the permutation again, but this time six many times. You keep adding your associated data. R bits at a time. And when it is done, you perform some kind of a padding here, exor operation, just to separate these two worlds. This is actually referred to as domain separation. If you don't do it, there can be some attacks where you have the associated data and you don't. Okay. But this is where the encryption part occurs. Okay. You put R bits of your plain text and exor it with your top R bits of your internal state. The result is provided at R bits of ciphertext block. Then you perform the permutation again, do it again, permit again, do it again. So again, these are six many times of permutation. When all of the plain texts are processed and you produce the ciphertext blocks, you perform an XOR operation here with your secret key, then perform the permutation operation again 12 times, XOR the bottom 128 bits with your secret key, then produce as a tag. So as you can see, I process the data only once, but I produce ciphertext and the tag. This is why it is lightweight. You know, you don't actually do uh, the like at the you know CCM or GCM. You had to do double encryption and so on. But this one is a lot faster, right? So if the picture is okay, let's look at what this P does to our three hundred and twenty bits. Recall that initially I fill it with IV, secret key, and the nodes. So the 320 bit state actually divided into five rows of 64 columns. 
you know, 320 is just five times 64. So recall that initially I put IV here at the top as 64 bits. Then put the secret key to this row, X1 and X2. Then put the nodes X3 to X4, okay? You fill it. Then you perform the permutation operation P A many times. So let's see what that P does to this internal state. So it starts with XORing with the round constant here to these bits. And round constants are provided here. Okay, depending on your runs, these are the constants you're exhorting here. Then you perform an S box operation. So this is a five by five S box. Since we have five rows, you perform this S box operation to every column. So 64 times in parallel. Okay, so this is why it starts from zero to 31 because two to the five is 32, right? So this is a five by five S box operation. So here you provide confusion, right? Now we need a diffusion layer. So we do it by these rotations. So for instance, X0, the top row is put here. Then you rotate this row 19 bits to the right, then 28 bits to the right, and you XOR these three values and write the result here. You perform different rotation numbers to different rows. So this way you kind of mix everything, okay? So the thing is that that's all. This is what a permutation does, okay? If I go back, round constant, S box, rotation. This is just one round. And if you go back, you repeat it A many times and obtain the result. So super fast. And again, uh, this S box operations might look costly because you know you have to take all of those five bits, you know, put it in the table and get the result and write it back. The good thing is that actually we can uh, perform this operation by looking at the rows, which is referred to as bit slicing technique, and just perform like 20 to 25 logical operations to complete all of the 64 SBAX operations in parallel. Okay, so there's a very nice bit slice implementation which uh, allows you to do everything in a really fast way. So let me explain briefly what does this mean. So for instance, you can look, uh, calculate this, uh, sorry, use this S box as a table lookup. You know, you can take five bits from here, put it into table and get the result and write it back. Or you can write this S box in an algebraic form where it is represented as just logical operations like XOR and so on. So actually you have five bit input and five bit output, right? X0 to X4. And let's say the outputs will be Y0, Y1 and so on. So with this five bit input, you can define some logical operations which allows you to obtain the five bit output, right? Which is maybe you start with XORing this bit with this one and so on. But if you keep these values as uh, 64 bit unsigned integers in your implementation, you can perform these logical operations in all of these 64 values at the same time. This means that if you XOR X0 with X1 as a row, you actually with a single instruction modify 64 different values, right? So our aim is to write this S box with as many small operations as we can, then run it on in parallel in all of these operations.